I can't believe I'm making this video. I feel exposed. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It feels like it's been forever since I've last seen you or since you've last seen one of my videos. And for those of you guys who's been following me for a while, you know I've been spending a lot of time at my plant shop, you know, taking care of plants that one day may be your future plants. And as a result, I'm barely spending time at home. So unfortunately, I hate to say this, but this video is going to be a sad vibes video because we are going to be throwing away some plants that are dead in my home right now. D-E-D, -E I mean D-E-A-D, I'm just kidding. And uh, these plants are not coming back. There might be a couple of them that might just be dormant. We'll see, we'll unpot them, take a look at their root ball, see what state they're in. But for the most part, I'm pretty confident that they're all dead. So for those of you guys who has killed a few plants in the past or is currently killing some today, don't feel bad, there is no shame in it. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little bit embarrassed to do this video. I can't believe I'm making one, but it happens to the best of us. Maybe things are starting to get back to normal depending on where you are. Maybe you're just getting a little bit more busier. Maybe you just have way too many plants and you can't keep up with the amount of plant work and care that they all need. So don't feel bad, no shame. This video is gonna be a sad vibes video. So for all of you guys looking for some happy-go-lucky videos, you can move along. And for those of us who wanna commiserate together, Grab yourself a drink. I'm actually drinking a dark and stormy. It's fitting for what we're about to do, which is throw away plants in the garbage. And uh, it's actually quite uh, dark and rainy right now here in Toronto. And uh, yeah, let's get this video together. So I'm gonna pour myself a drink while you guys go get yours and then we'll get this started. All right guys, so I got my drink. I got my garbage bag. And the first plant we're gonna take a look at is the... <laughs> Um, you guys can't even tell what this is, but this was actually my sis's this color that I got, I think last year, that did so well, you know, uh, last winter. And spring came along and summer and it bounced back, obviously dropped a few leaves during the winter time. I've cut and propagated this sis's this color a few times, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy, it's so crispy and dry right now. So with Sissus this color, like I always tell everyone, you cannot allow the soil to dry out completely, even for 30 minutes or so, or even a day, because they will shrivel up so fast. And once that happens, it's almost impossible to get them to bounce back. But this is definitely uh, like <laughs> severely dehydrated and neglected, and there is no way the roots are even alive here. So we're not even gonna look. We are just gonna throw this guy in the garbage. <laughs> and we're gonna keep the pot because we gotta reuse and recycle these plastic pots. Bye bye, sis is this color. <laughs> Cheers, sis is this color. Okay, the next plant we're gonna throw away is the. I don't even know if you guys can see this. Let's see if you, it'll focus. Uh, I might have to zoom in. But this is I actually see it fell. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> this is my Stefania erecta and if you guys recall it's one of those uh, tuberous type of plants that grows a nice vine and I got this I think last summer as well look how shriveled up and dehydrated this guy is so it almost looks like a potato when it's nice and healthy and alive you know I don't feel so bad because the most I got out of this plant was a tiny little leaf it didn't even grow to its full potential or what it can possibly do but it just, it just wasn't thriving for me. And eventually, I guess, because it had like a, such a tiny leaf that I barely noticed it when I'm watering plants, so I completely forgot about it. And now that I'm barely spending time at home, it completely got neglected. So this is now our Stefania erecta. Goodbye, little guy. <laughs> Cheers, Stefania erecta. All right, so the next plant we're throwing in the garbage is the... You know what? I actually do not even know what this thing is. It's in Spagna Moss, it was in my greenhouse, and I, I'm guessing it was probably a cutting of a Melnochrysum, but let's take a look. Yeah, the Spagna Moss is super dry. <laughs> Here's a <the> leaf. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm laughing about it now because I can't get sad about it, so I just gotta laugh about it. <laughs> I really have no idea what this is. Let's take a look at the vine. Yeah, it's so crispy. <laughs> I'm thinking this was a, I'm thinking this was a Melnochrysum uh, cutting that I planted in Spagna Moss. And I, I, there was a couple leaves on here because I saw those two dry dead leaves, but whatever this is, goodbye. Cheers to possibly a Philodendron Melnochrysum, but still unknown. 
You guys know I like using sphagnum moss to really develop the roots and it really does minimize the chances of you overwatering because there's just so many air pockets. The drawback to using sphagnum moss is obviously it dries up so fast. So like I said, I, I'm barely spending time at home. I forgot to water these plants and they just dried up. So <laughs> that is that. So the next plant we're gonna throw in the garbage is the... Ta-da! So this is actually a Tenante Burley Mars, I think is what the plant was. So it's part of the prayer plant. And if you guys recall, for those of you who's like followed me since the beginning of my journey, this was actually one of my very first uh, plants or prayer plant. And it looked really cool. So to be fair, I did have this for a very long time. I think 2017, 2018. Um, it finally said goodbye and moved on to you know, the afterlife because uh, I, I have not watered this guy for so long. And for a while there, he actually went bald. And then I was able to kind of get him to bounce back. You know, I caught it on time. Uh, the roots were still healthy. So I just gave it the right, you know, lighting condition, the right watering, and eventually started to sprout out new leaves. But this is beyond, you know, saving at this point, because even if I take a look at the roots, I'm going to dump this guy out and see if the roots are any healthy. But chances are the roots are as crispy as the leaves here are. So goodbye to Nante Burley Marcy. So let's just take a look. Yeah, and a lot of my potting medium lately has been like, look at all the perlite in here. I don't know if it'll focus. So this was really airy and dry. So oh uh, yeah, there's, yeah, the roots, yeah. Yep, there's no way I'm gonna be able to save this. Roots are crispy. They're falling apart into pieces. So. Cheers to Nante Burley Marcy. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I'm making this video. Okay, I feel exposed. <laughs> I know you guys think I'm like a crazy plant guy that all my plants are perfect and I don't kill any plants, but I'm a plant killer. <laughs> oh, it happens. Okay, so the next plant we're gonna throw in the garbage is the ta-da, the begonia maculata. Yeah, this this guy. I mean, it's possible that I might be able to save him, uh, but the leaves are pretty much like dried up. The vines are starting to become like woody and brown, and it's really losing a lot of that moisture. So you guys can tell when a vine has kind of lost its moisture, and yeah, it's becoming more woodier and crispier, and literally like yeah, this this guy's gone. So. We're gonna keep our little steak here because we might be able to use that. I do just wanna double check the roots just to be sure, but oh yeah. <laughs> you hear that crispy crackling of the roots? Yeah, this, this guy's gone. Okay, goodbye Begonia Maculata. Cheers to him. <laughs> so the next plant we're gonna throw away is actually uh, one of the newer plants I got, not even maybe like a month ago. Uh, and it was beautiful, but unfortunately these types of plants, they need their soil to be a little bit more on the moist or consistently moist side. But it is the, <laughs> can you guys tell what it is? It's actually the Alocasia Hilo or Hilo Beauty or possibly a Caladium. But man, these plants, I know they go dormant in the winter, but at the same time, most likely this guy's pretty much dehydrated. The bulbs are probably dehydrated as well, but let's take a look. It's possible that it's dormant and we can probably wake it up in the springtime, but it is very unlikely to be honest, but let's just take a look. I don't know if you guys can see there, but it barely has a bulb large enough for it to have retained the moisture. So chances are this is dead. And I mean, we can experiment by seeing, oh maybe, hold on. You know what? It might actually be alive here. I'm gonna take a B-roll shot of it so you guys can see, but you guys can see there's a bit of green still at the top of that bulb. So let's go ahead and save it just in case we're able to wake this guy up come spring. But uh, for the most part, that plant is de <laughs> Cheers, potentially Hilo Beauty. Possibly we can wake it up in the spring because that's one thing that's cool about alocasias is they do go dormant But because they grow from like a bulb if that bulb is healthy You can still reproduce or you know try and grow the roots again and eventually grow some foliage come spring So so we're gonna save that little bulb and see what uh, happens in spring Okay, so the next plant we're gonna throw in the garbage is the ta -da, The string of hearts So this is actually cuttings from my mother plant that I rooted in water and planted it in its own soil but because these are still baby 
a string of hearts. You don't want to allow the soil to dry out completely. You still want to make sure that there is a bit of moisture within the leaves because the leaves are so small, unlike my mother plant, which I can allow to dry out completely and, you know, still water thoroughly. But with this guy, I've obviously, you know, allowed the soil to dry out completely and more. It's probably been weeks since I watered this guy, but yeah, you guys can just see how crispy these vines are. They're dead. And maybe there's a bit of tubers in the soil, but let's take a look. If there isn't, yeah, I, th these were all roots. There was no tubers growing in there. I remember when I planted this, so this guy's gone. Goodbye, string of hearts and cheers. May you enjoy plant heaven. <laughs> so the next plant we're gonna throw away in the garbage is the, to be fair, some of these plants are cuttings that I cut from a mother plant. So the mother plant I still have. This is a neon pothos cutting that I planted, uh, rooted in water through uh, propagation and eventually planted in soil and it was growing. But you guys can see how wilted the leaves are. The main vines are also pretty wilted. So I can try and water it. But when you water a plant that's pretty much been dehydrated like this, the leaves are going to drop. So it's going to be a super bare vine. And if you're lucky, you know, if it's not too late, it may shoot out some new growth and new leaves. But it is going to be really like leggy, if that makes sense, or more like a runner style. So we're just going to take a look, see if the roots, yeah. This guy's gone, so <laughs> goodbye, Neon Pothos. The one thing I'm actually learning as I'm doing this because I'm looking at the roots is the amount of perlite I have in a lot of these potting medium because I'm so afraid to overwater. I think if it didn't have as much of the perlite, there probably would have been a chance that some of these guys would be alive today, to be honest, uh, because again, perlite and pumice really creates a lot of that drainage, but now that I'm not spending as much time at home and know that I may, you know, miss my watering, I might hold off on some of the perlite that I'm using in my potting medium and maybe add a bit more of the soil to help retain a bit of that moisture. So that is definitely one thing, at least I'm uh, learning as we're going through this uh, throwing plants in the garbage video or exercise. But so the next plant we're going to throw away is the, so this is actually a baby sunrose variegated and Man, these are succulents, so they like a lot of bright lights. So I actually have this close to my south facing window, but the leaves aren't as thick as like traditional succulents like Echevaras and whatnot. So they often do need to be watered quite a bit. And yeah, I don't even know when the last time I watered this guy. So he's all crispy and gone. And <laughs> we're gonna keep the pot because it's obviously in one of these ceramic pots. So I'm just gonna pull him out of it. <laughs> and yeah, goodbye, baby sunrose. Cheers. All right, guys. So the last plant I'm going to throw away is I'm so disappointed that I actually let this plant go because it was one of my favorite. If not, it was my favorite alocasia last summer. It is the, <laughs> yeah, I know you guys can't tell what it is. So I'm going to throw a picture of what this plant was, but it is my alocasia dragon scale baginda. And man, this plant has such beautiful colors on its foliage obviously resembles that of a dragon scale. It was between this and my silver dragon that was probably my top two favorite allocations in my collection. But my silver dragon for some reason did really, really well. And this one, I don't know what happened. I really honestly don't know what happened. I did have this one in the greenhouse versus my silver dragon that wasn't in the greenhouse. So maybe that was it because I was often seeing it more than this one. This was kind of hidden in the back. So I barely noticed it to be honest. And I think it was just too late. You know, I tried watering it when I started to see the leaves kind of fall off. It was down to one leaf, which was this crispy guy that you see. <laughs> and uh, I tried watering it, but at that point it was too late. So it probably went dormant because allocations tend to go dormant if you don't give the right proper growing condition. And that's light watering and temperature. So all of that kind of just been neglected. I don't think I was even turning on my grow lights um, in my cabinet, to be honest. I'm a little bit bummed out about it, but let's take a look to see if the tuber or the bulb is somewhat healthy and maybe we can uh, wake this guy up. So yeah. <laughs> Again, the potting medium I use for my alocasia is still quite airy, so I may need to change it and adjust it a bit, but let's take a look. Okay, that is really strange. Like, I don't see one. It was just like a stump. And I wonder if this is the way it originally came. Um, I don't remember. Nonetheless, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and remove all the dead 
uh, leaves and skin off this and I think we're gonna throw it in the prop box to see if it will shoot out any roots or any growth points. Uh, we can experiment with this guy but yeah so this is now my alocasia dragon scale baginda. Rest in peace. <laughs> So those are the plants that we threw away in the garbage and you know some of them I'm a little bit sad that it got to that point like the Alocasia Dragon Tail. Others I was okay to part ways with. Um, there's a few honorable mentions in my collection right now that's not looking too good but there's still a bit of life in them like my Ponytail Palm, the Ficus Elastica cutting, the top cutting, <laughs> or actually that was the Ruby and um, you know a few of my Philodendrons. Uh, all my Anthuriums unfortunately got attacked by thrips. So I'm actually going through a stage of rehabbing all of them because the one thing about Anthuriums is they have such really healthy roots. Uh, so I kept the moss like really moist and they were growing. It's just unfortunately all the foliages have been cut off to try and save the plants. So we're going to try and regrow a lot of those leaves again. It's going to be a little bit tough now that we're heading into the fall winter season. But I'm confident that they will make a comeback. Um, there's some plants that I'm ready to die but won't die like my filly leaf fig is still here so uh, I don't know what I gotta do uh, for that guy to go but for some reason it, it, it just it's taunting me right now stop looking at me I'm just kidding but but hopefully for those of you guys who stayed and watched this video to commiserate with me don't feel bad don't feel ashamed that you killed plants it happens to the best of us I think the key thing is just knowing and understanding what happen or what cause your plants to die like that. Uh, if it's you neglecting them, then make adjustments in your lifestyle, whether that's cutting back on your plant collection and downsizing or just maybe adjusting a few things. Like for me, I just learned that my potting medium, now that I'm spending a lot of my time at the shop and barely at home, I really need to adjust my potting medium to not make it so airy with a lot of perlite or pumice. Because I found that when I was dumping a lot of those plants, there was a lot of perlite in the potting soil. So yeah, that's definitely what I learned. But, uh, but yeah, comment below and let me know what plants you're killing right now or the plants you're ready to throw out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.